Hello and welcome to the latest exhibition of European prints and drawings at the Zimmerle Art Museum. This fall, uh, in conjunction with Rutgers' inaugural season competing in the Big Ten, we have pulled out a selection of works from our French drawings, prints, and photographs that demonstrate the rise of a sporting and recreation culture in France, particularly Paris, uh, during the 19th century. Throughout Western Europe and the United States, sports became a more uh, integral part of leisure activity and culture. During the Civil War uh, in the United States was when baseball sort of became an active pastime. And at this, around the same time in England, horse racing and also organized sports like rugby are um, becoming more popular, particularly um, at, in schools. Um, schools are incorporating team sports into, into their curricula in England. In France, this uh, interest in sporting activities uh, really took off beginning in the 1870s, not only because of the example in the United States and England, but also because of the sound defeat that France took at the hands of the Prussian army during the Franco-Prussian War, um, which ended in 1871 and resulted in France actually ceding territory to the, to the Prussian Empire. Um, in the sort of soul searching that occurred following this defeat, one of the factors that was continually cited was how, just how fit and strong the Prussian soldiers were. And so um, physical fitness sort of became part of the national agenda in France in the 1870s. Sports was also part of the entertainment culture, which many of us are more familiar with in the 19th century in France. Alongside the cabarets and cafes where you could see singers and dancers, you could often also see athletic activities. And many new venues were created during the 19th century where you could see such activities. One of these um, was the Hippodrome in Paris. This was a very large stadium that could seat about 6,000 spectators. And um, the name Hippodrome refers to its primary spectacles that were on view there, which were related to horses. But there were also many other types of activities uh, that took place at the Hippodrome. And this is a poster by the great poster artist Jules Charest from the 1880s. Um, which demonstrates that foot races were also part of the um, entertainment program at the Hippodrome. Um, this poster tells us that um, there were foot races every Tuesday and Friday, and then the text down here talks about some of the other performances that one could see. But then the most important information is that um, anyone, men or women, could sign up to participate in these foot races between 9 and 11 any, any morning. So this tells us that it was popular enough both for participants and for spectators that they could present it twice a week. Um, another uh, opportunity to see athletic feats was at the circus in 19th century France. And we have a uh, sort of publicity photograph of a very famous performer named Miss Lala um, this photograph was taken in 1881 when she was really at the height of her fame. She was an international celebrity performing with her circus troupe and she was specifically known for her feats of strength. She was so famous that actually Edgar Degas made her the subject of the only painting he ever made of a circus subject. Um, but what uh, we love about this photograph in particular and we really appreciate today is just the, the photograph is staged to really show off just how strong she is um, many people who've uh, looked at this photograph without knowing exactly who it is sort of says, oh, is that a gymnast? Um, so she definitely has that athletic posture and, is, and that is her, her calling card at this point. And um, it's interesting to note that um, she features very prominently in an early 20th century history of bodybuilding um, that was published in France uh, in the, around 1905. Uh, we have a nice group of works by the artist Louis Anquetin, who was very famous uh, in the 19th century, not as well known today. He had um, kind of a career where he would burst onto the scene with many famous uh, exhibitions and works, and then he would kind of retreat to the studio for a few years and not um, produce quite as much, and then, but then when he reemerged, he was always taking a different direction with his work. Um, 
This uh, print, which is no, called the finish line at Longchamp, uh, it's from about 1893, and um, it is flanked in the exhibition by two related drawings, also of horse racing at Longchamp, the, um, the racetrack in, out, just outside of Paris. Um, and this, uh, these, this interest in depicting horse racing um, emerges after one of these sort of self-imposed uh, retreats by the artist. Um, and we do know that in the years leading up to this, he visited the racetrack at Longchamp as well as uh, one at Otoy uh, and got permission not only to sketch in the stands, but also to sort of go back to the, um, the stables to um, get a closer look at the horses and the jockeys. Ankatan in this uh, print captures both the excitement of the participants and the spectators in this, um, who are watching the completion of this horse race. Um, in addition to the great athleticism of the riders and the horses in this, there's also these postures of the jockeys and the horses sort of leaning in is mirrored by the spectators who are so involved in the race. A work like this really captures what was so um, interesting and um, exciting about sports culture in France was it um, provided opportunities not only to uh, witness athletic ability, but also the, the, ability, the opportunity for different classes to mix out in the fresh air and, and just to see something a little bit out of their um, everyday experience. Cycling and um, recreational uh, bicycling became probably the signature sport in France uh, in the late 19th and early 20th century. We have a nice example of an, uh, the early connection of sports and marketing. Uh, with this poster by the artist Edouard Rouillard, who's better known as a painter, but he was very, um, he was also very active as a printmaker, although this is the only full color uh, poster that he ever made. Um, and it shows uh, in his wonderful, um, almost abstract style where we get a bird's eye view um, of a velodrome, a, a bicycle racing track with a bike race in progress and sort of the finishers over here. And then in the field uh, around which they're cycling, we have the, um, the product at hand, which is called bacon. Um, and it's, the, the word bacon is actually another word for bike in French. And the, this poster is telling us that cyclists take bacon, a, um, a tonic, that is based in meat and will restore you after your bike ride. Uh, so it's sort of a, an early sports drink that is capitalizing on the interest in cycling, both um, as, again, as something um, that people participate in, that's something people watch, and that has its own celebrities and a culture where um, saying that cyclists take a particular drink is going to help sell it. Um, and interestingly, at this point, uh, there are professional bike riders, they have sponsorships from bike companies, and uh, there are very highly um, organized biking competitions that are attracting crowds of 20,000 uh, in Paris at this time. So this exhibition will be on view through January 17th, 2015. The Zimmerly Art Museum is located at 71 Hamilton Street in New Brunswick on the College Avenue campus of Rutgers University. Admission is free to visit the museum and for many events. The Zimmerly is open Tuesdays through Fridays from 10 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. and Saturdays and Sundays from noon to 5. The museum is open until 9 p.m. on the first Tuesday of each month for Art After Hours. Join us for curator-led tours, live music, and other exciting activities. Admission is free. Visit our website at www.zimmerlymuseum.rutgers.edu for more information.